This is Known Podcast, hosted by Dustin Bennett, the lead pastor of Known Victory Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Known Podcast is dedicated to helping you grow closer to Jesus, unleashing the power of your creativity, and developing you as a leader. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Well, welcome back to the Known Podcast. So excited you're joining us today. And today we want to start a new conversation called Out of Focus. You know, there was a study that came out in the United States in America uh, that says 50% of people struggle with concentration or with focus, a lack of focus on the regular basis. So people, so a lot of us, we struggle with focus. We struggle with concentration. And we can see this practically in our life. Like some of us, you know, we've had projects that we've been trying to do at our house for like two, three years that we said we were going to do. We're going to get to it. Yes, I'll do it. And then we just keep procrastinating and we, we lose our focus on kind of what some of the things in front of us. We lose focus at home. We, maybe, maybe you're working from home, you know, for COVID or maybe you still are. And you feel like your focus at, at home is just kind of not where it's supposed to be. And you feel like, you know, like, I wish I could focus more. I, I'm not getting projects done on time. I'm missing deadlines. And so I think it... A lack of focus really can affect so many things, right? It can affect our relationships. A lack of focus can affect our careers. It can affect our jobs. It can affect so many things in our life. And I want to have this conversation that I think will really help us to to, to bring things back into focus, to to bring things back so that we, we can actually become more productive. Like I think have the ability to focus gives you the power to become more productive. It also gives us the ability to to grow exponentially, right? If we can start becoming more productive, if we can start to to get things done on time, we can stop procrastinating, we can start to focus even on relationships. I think that can have a really big um, impact on our life, you know, and for me, this is a struggle I've had for so long, you know, for me, even when I, when I read a book, right, I'll read a book and I'll get through one page and I'll get to the end of the page and realize, whoa, I don't even remember one thing I read. I don't remember what I read. So I have to read it over and over until I fully understand or comprehend. Like my mind just starts wandering. I'm thinking about what I'm going to wear tomorrow. I'm thinking about, you know, the pizza I'm about to order. You know, my mind is just like going a mile a minute and I need to figure out how do I focus? And other times, you know, my wife and I were, we're having a conversation, you know, we're talking and I can see that her mouth is moving, right? I can see that, that, that she, she's saying something, but my mind is not understanding the words that are coming out of her mouth, right? That's like Chris Tucker said to Jackie Chan in the movie Rush Hour, right? I can see that you're speaking, but I have no idea what you're saying because my mind is all over the place. You know, a lack of focus is a problem, right? And it's a problem because it affects our careers, it affects our relationships, and it affects some, oftentimes our education, right? We need to learn how to become more focused, but the question that I think we have to start with when it comes to focus is what causes a lack of focus, right? What is it that I'm doing or what is it that, that happens to people that causes us to not have focus? What are those things? And I'm going to read, you know, a list of some of these things to you. And you might look at this list and think, yeah, that is exactly me. And so there's some of these things are, you know, ADHD can cause a lack of focus. Absolutely. You know, anxiety and depression and stress can cause a lack of focus. You know, hunger, trying to multitask, trying, you know, not sleeping enough, getting a lack of sleep can affect our focus and eating lots of sugar or fatty foods and, you know, not getting enough exercise. These things can highly impact our ability to focus. These things have the ability to to take away our focus, to shift our priorities and make us think about the wrong things and lose focus on the things that we are in front of us and focusing on the wrong thing. And these are those things. And when you look at that, you know, again, ADHD or anxiety or depression or stress or hunger or multitasking or lack of sleep or, you know, eating lots of sugary or fatty foods, you know, not getting enough exercise. What, what, what causes anxiety uh, or what causes um, a lack of focus in your life? What is it that actually causes you to, to lose focus? And if we want to truly combat our lack of focus and build up our productivity, we need to do three things, three things that I think will really help us um, and have the power, I think, to change our lives. And some of these things I'm bringing into practice into my own life because this is something I struggle with, focus. So I want to encourage you, you know, if you're taking notes today, even this is what it's going to be, you know, three things that I think will help us. Number one is we have to diagnose the problem. We have to actually do a diagnosis of our life. How am I doing when it comes to focus at work? 
How am I doing when it comes to, to, to my focus with my family? Do I just come home and you know scroll on my phone? I, I'm missing out. I'm, I'm not present with my family because my focus is just, I'm tired, right? Like, like what? Do a diagnosis in your life. And, you know, this summer, my family and I, we, we went on so many road trips, right? We, you know, we were going, you know, driving for weddings. And so we, we drove a lot. And then one day we realized our car was making a horrible noise. Like I'm telling you, it sounded horrible. And you know what we did is we just turned the music up and kept on driving. But one day that didn't work anymore. And so what we had to do is we had to bring it into the shop to make sure that we're, we're not causing serious problems, you know, with our car. And so we got into the shop and they diagnosed it, right? They, they brought it in and said, okay, this is the problem. You know, through the diagnosis, we learned the problem, and then they were able to get the right parts, and they were able to fix our vehicle for us because they, re they found the problem. You know, for me, I realized that, that when I don't get enough exercise, I tend to sleep less, and when I sleep less, I eat worse, and when all of these ingredients are added together, I become a focusless buffoon. Like, I'm telling you, if, if I don't get exercise, I sleep so poorly, and when I'm tired, I eat poorly, and it's just a cycle where my, my focus is gone. Like, I'm telling you, I lose all of my focus. All of it just goes away. You know, for me, when I want to grow and, and, and become more focused as a, as a husband, as a, as a father, as a pastor, it starts with me realizing, okay, what is causing this today? Why is it that my focus is so low and for me it starts you know if I can get exercise I'm gonna sleep better and when I'm not so tired I'm gonna eat better and then I can actually become more focused so I've kind of figured out in my life okay the problem is I'm not getting enough exercise the problem is I'm not getting enough sleep the problem is I'm not eating healthy enough and so when I start to shift those things when I start getting more exercise when I start uh, sleeping better when I start eating better my focus actually becomes way better because I'm not so focused on so many things. My focus is just on what's in front of me right now. What's in front of me in this moment? The question is, why is your focus so low? We have to ask that question. It might be an intimidating question to ask. It might be a little scary, but we have to ask this question of why is it that my focus is so low right now? Why? Why? Why do I struggle with focus right now? Why is it that on Mondays my focus is horrible, but by Thursday my focus is way better? My productivity is better on Thursday than Monday. Maybe you're going into Monday too tired. You know what? Figure it out. What's the diagnosis on your level of focus right now in this moment? And for us, you know, with our car, the problem was our transmission. You know, our transmission was grinding. It was having serious problems. It was scraping. And, you know, the mechanic, he, he talked to me after. He said, hey, you know, I was checking the transmission fluid for you, and there was metal pieces in the fluid. And I don't know a lot about cars, but he's like, that's not a good thing, right? That's not a good thing. We have to do a diagnosis, diagnosis on where we are at. What is the diagnosis of where you are? And, you know, the symptom of our car was the scraping noise, right? But the source was the transmission, right? The scraping is what indicated there was a problem. And then we had to do a diagnosis to figure out what the problem was. And so that's the first thing. You know, we have to do a diagnosis. Number two is we have to make a plan. We have to actually make a plan. And once we know the source, you know, it might be you have ADHD. It might be that you struggle with anxiety. It might be that you struggle with depression. It might be your lack of sleep. It might not be, it might be not eating well. It could be, you know, maybe it's even stress related for you. But once you know the problem, it's time to make a plan to create better habits, right? We know the problem. We've done the diagnosis. Now what? Make a plan, right? Do something about it. Don't just, you know, we sometimes we don't, we know it all. We know the information, but we don't do anything about it, right? We, we know, oh yeah, I struggle with focus. This is why, but I'm not willing to change my diet. I'm not willing to get more exercise. I'm not willing to go to bed earlier. You know, I'm not willing to make these changes, but if you want to become more focused, we have to learn to make a plan and live it out. You know, make a plan. What's going to help you become more focused in your life. And if you struggle with anxiety, right, which I think a lot of us right now in this day and age, we struggle with anxiety. Staying up late watching high stress TV shows is not going to help you. It is going to make things wor worse. What you do the night before prepares you for what's in front of you. What you do, the sleep you get, the food you eat, it prepares you for what's next. 
You know, and my wife and I, we worked as, as youth and young adults pastors for seven years. And so our, week, our weeks consisted of, you know, Tuesday night young adults, Wednesday night youth. And so we'd be getting home, you know, on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, anytime between like 930 and like midnight, right? We'd be getting home and after like clean up and all that stuff, you know, taking care of what we're doing. We'd get home so late. So we'd cook a meal and then we'd, we'd watch TV. That was kind of our routine, you know, to kind of wind down after, you know, a long day, a long night. And so we'd go, you know, we'd watch TV. And then one day. We started watching this TV show that was like this like kind of like murder mystery, you know, type, type TV show. And, and all of a sudden, my, my sleep was horrible because I'm up late and I'm, you know, thinking. And I didn't realize that how much this was impacting me. I didn't realize how, how watching this thing that was high stress causing, you know, even more anxiety for me was causing so many problems for me. Until one day, I, I was in bed. It was like 2 in the morning. I'd been up for like 2 hours just thinking. And my question through my mind was, who killed him? Right? Who killed that guy? I need to know what the answer to this problem. And I, it was keeping me up at night. I had to realize that I need to make some changes if I want to have better focus at work. I need to make some changes if I want to be more focused with my family. I need to make some changes if I want to become more productive. I need to start getting to bed earlier. And so we changed our routine. And now, you know, if we're up late and watching TV, we do not watch things that are stressful. We watch, you know, you know, low key, you know, comedies, things that are just, you know, happy. So that way I go to bed, you know, I'm feeling good. You know, so you might have to change your routines in order to actually become more focused. What's the plan you have in front of you that's going to help you become more focused. If focus is a problem, which again, for 50% of us, it is, what are you going to do about it? What's the solution, right? What's the solution? And then make a plan and make it happen, right? Find a solution, try something, and then see if it works. You know, for me, I actually started on a medication for ADHD because I've had ADHD my whole life. I got diagnosed, you know, when I was a young kid and, and I'd been on medication a little bit, you know, when I was a teenager. But, you know, recently my wife and I had some conversations and thought, you know what, let's try. You know, what's the harm in trying, seeing if, you know, if we go on, if I go on some sort of ADHD medication, how will that actually help? Will it help? Will it cause more problems, right? There's a lot of fear sometimes that comes in with, you know, trying a medication. So we decided, okay, yeah, let's try it. So I started this, this new medication and, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. But it's interesting because the medication actually allowed me to be more focused and more productive, right? It really actually shifted some things in my brain that have really helped me when it comes to focus. It has benefited our family, right? It's benefited our job. It's benefited my relationships. It's benefited our church. And I want to encourage you that medication has the ability to help. We need to be careful, of course. Like, we need to be careful with medication, absolutely. But if you struggle with anxiety, if you struggle with depression, if you struggle with ADHD, it could be time to approach your doctor and ask some questions, right? There's no harm in asking questions, you know, just, again, figuring out, okay, how will this help me? Will it help me when it comes to, you know, sleep and eating? Like, will it help me? You know, medication is not always bad. It's not always wrong. It's not always bad but figure out the plan you have how can i become more focused again it might be getting more sleep it might be getting more exercise it might be eating healthier i don't know what it is for you but figure out a way to become more focused figure out why figure out the symptom right i'm seeing these signs i'm not getting projects on time but the 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 symptom is different than the problem right a symptom it comes from the problem right we're seeing the symptom because of the problem and so we need to look at it's okay I see the symptom, right? My relationships are really struggling. My relationship with my family and with my wife and with my husband is really poor, but what do I do about it? Well, you know, that's the symptom. What's the problem? You know, and so figure it out for you what that problem is and make a plan to actually make something happen in your life. Don't let the fear of sharing your story get in the way of finding a solution to your problem of focus. You know, we share your story. You know, even go to your doctor, go to your family, go to your spouse. I'm struggling with focus. Help me make a plan. Like, like, can we go and we can, you know, make this plan? Can we go forward together? So that's number two is, is make a plan. Number one was diagnose the problem. Number two, make a plan. Number three is this, track the progress. It's one thing to make a plan, right? It's one thing to have the, 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 the clarity say, okay, I'm going to make this plan. It's going to change my life and it's going to be amazing. Then it's another thing altogether to actually follow through. Right? There's a difference between thinking 
and do it. There's a difference between having an idea and actually making it happen. You know, make a plan, of course, but then track the progress in it. Track the progress in it. You might, you know, might start going to bed earlier and creating a better nightly routine for yourself. You know, this is my routine when I, you know, get, get ready for sleep. And you might, but you might not even realize the progress you've made through the small changes, right? It's hard to, to gauge change when it's so subtle. It's hard to gauge the effects that something is having on you when it's so subtle. It, it, it's hard to gauge it. You know, and when I started recall, recalling trying to, to change the, the way I focus and create space for my productivity in my life, right? When I made, okay, this is a problem for me. I needed a way to track my progress. I needed a way to realize, okay, I struggled with this, with focus. And I've made a plan, right? I'm trying to change my routine before bed. You know, I'm trying, you know, whatever it is. But how do we track that progress? You might, again, you might not even be able to recognize the change. You might not be able to recognize the progress. We need to figure out ways. How do I track this? How do I track my screen time? How do I track, you know, how I'm doing when it comes to focus? And I think there's, you know, a few ways that we can do this. Number one is find accountability, right? Find somebody that you trust to hold you accountable and share what they see in you. Share the change they see. Share the difference that they're noticing. Share what it is that they're actually figuring out. You know, do they see it? Right, because it's often easier for someone else to see change in you than it is for you to see in yourself because you're just living it out. And for me, this is my wife. You know, my accountability person is my wife. And, you know, the first day I started on my, on my medication for ADHD, uh, she, she immediately saw a difference, immediately. Instead of coming home after a long day, you know, going on the couch, scrolling through Facebook and Instagram, you know, mindlessly, aimlessly scrolling, I came home. And I started cooking dinner. I, I cooked her a nice quesadilla. You know, she's dairy-free and gluten-free, so I probably wouldn't have eaten it myself. But she was blown away that I came home after a long day. I was tired, and I made dinner. It just shocked her. And, and she saw the change before I did. I didn't even notice. You know, I just did my thing. And I was like, I'm cooking, you know, whatever. I'm just going to cook a meal for my wife and my kid. It's going to be, you know, really, really good. And, and it just shocked her the difference that you saw. Do you have somebody in your life that you trust to be accountable to you, that you can be accountable to as well? Do you have somebody in your life that will help you track your progress? Say, hey, you know, I noticed that today, you know, at work you weren't as focused as normal. Is there something going on, right? Do we have people around us that will help us to be uh, more accountable to the plan that we made? Find somebody that will be there for you and help you when it comes to gauging or tracking the progress of the changes that you're making in your life. And then, so that's number one, which is find accountability. Number two is diagnose again. Now that you have a plan, right? You have a plan, you figured out, okay, this is the solution to the problem. I know the symptom. I know the problem now. Now I'm going to find the solution. You have to diagnose again. Okay. That's where I was. This is where I want to be. Where am I right now? Are you tracking that? Are you Keeping a notes on, okay, this is, you know, the, the productivity out of work. You know, these are the projects that I used to be able to do in a week. Now I can do this many projects. You know, what is it? In, and this is how much phone screen time I had today, right? So, so how much time are you spending on your phone? You know, how much time are you spending on your phone on social media compared to a month ago or last week? You know, and all of our phones, you know, Android or Apple, they have op options for tracking your screen time that'll gauge, okay, you spent this much time on Facebook and this much time on YouTube and this much time on Netflix and this much time in your email. It'll track that for us. And so I think a lot of the time, obviously, our phone is one of our biggest distractions because we have access to just every information on the planet is we have access on our phone. Our phone is so distracting. And so for me, you know, I gauge my screen time based on, on the apps I'm using it in, right? And so for me, you know, I was checking just today and I was checking, you know, my screen time compared to last week is actually down 20% so far this week. You know, it's down 20%, which for me in my life means I'm, I'm being a little bit more productive because I'm spending less time, you know, wasting on social media or on YouTube, whatever it is. You know, do you track how much time you spend on your phone? Do you track how much time you spend, you know, doing some of the things that are actually a distraction for you that are pulling you away from focus, pulling you away from the projects at work, pulling you away from being present with your family? Do you track that? And, you know, it's interesting when you when, when you start like a weight loss journey and you see this, you know, all of our social media, you know, see 
people on, you know, um, weight loss journeys, one of the biggest things that trainers will tell you is to take pictures of you before you start the journey. The reason why is not to like flaunt the change. The reason why is because it's such a subtle change that you might not even recognize it because it's every single day. It's, it's, it's slow. It's a slow process. So they say, Hey, take a picture before. So that way now, you know, a month, two months, three months later, you can actually see the progress because you can see, okay, this is where I was and this is where I am now. You know, diagnosing again is really, really key when it comes to becoming more focused because we can actually see, okay, this is where I was and this is where I am now and this is where I want to be, right? So track the progress, right? Figure out, okay, I diagnosed then. Now I'm going to go back. Okay, now where am I? You know, how is my productivity? How are my projects? You know, how are my relationships? You know, gauge it again. And then lastly, number three is create a schedule. You know, schedules help us track track projects. You know, they keep them in front of us, the things that we are in the middle of doing, the things that we need to start, and the projects that we finish. We keep them in front of us so we know, okay, this is this is what I've accomplished this week off of my list. And I think all of us, we have lists of things that we need to do at work, lists of things we need to do at home, lists of things that we need to accomplish. And so we need to make a schedule to say, okay, you know, I accomplished this, you know, last week. And this week, this is what I accomplished. That's a way to track it because you can say, okay, you know, two weeks ago, these are the projects I got done. You know, two weeks ago, you know, this is how much time I spent on this thing and that thing. And then now, okay, what did I do this week? Am I seeing progress in my productivity from week to week, from month to month to year to year? Are you tracking that? Are you actually creating a schedule to know, okay, you know, these are the things that I need to do in my life. You know, for me, I have three boards in my office, right? I have one board. Uh, that, 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 that has all of my ideas, right? The projects that, that I need to start, the projects that I'm in the middle of, and the projects that we've, we've accomplished. You know, I keep that all in front of me so I can look at my board and say, okay, you know, these are the things that I need to do uh, this week or today or this month in order to continue the progress for the future, in order to continue to build, you know, what God is doing, you know, in, in my context, which is our church. You know, I, I, I see it, and so I can actually track, okay, this is what I actually accomplished this week or this month. And then my second board is kind of our vision. You know, I have all my vision, you know, on this board and kind of what I do every week, what we post on social media. You know, I have it all scheduled out. And then the last board I have is just our calendar for our church. You know, I have you know, everything laid out for the next four months and what we're talking about, you know, what's going to happen. And I do this so that way I can keep, keep in front of me the things that are a priority. You know, I can keep in front of me the, the projects or the people that I actually need to focus on, you know, this week or this month or this year. These are the things. So make a schedule that will help you. And Eisenhower was the president of the United States, and he came up with this, this, this very cool principle. And it's summed up like this, and I'm going to read this. It, and it says, the, Eisenhower's urgent slash important principle helps you quickly identify the activities that you should focus on, as well as the ones you should ignore. When you use this tool to prioritize your time, you can deal with truly urgent issues at the same time as you work towards important long-term goals. To use this tool, list all of your tasks and activities, right? Write it down, make a schedule, put it on a board, put it on your phone, put it on your computer, whatever it is. P put it on there. Make a list of all your tasks and activities and put each one into one of the following categories. Number one, important and urgent, right? It's very important and it needs to happen right now. It's, it's an important thing that I need to do and it needs to happen in this moment. Number two is important, but not urgent. It's really important that I do it, but it might not need to happen right now in this moment because it's not a it's not it's not a it's not a tragedy, you know, it's not a it's not a something that just come up in the middle of nowhere, right? Number three is not important but urgent. You know, some of the things that, you know, these need to happen right now. It might not be that important to the, the progress of my business or my life, but it needs to be dealt with right now. I need to deal with this right now. Number four is not important and not urgent. So then schedule your tasks and activities based on their importance and urgency. I think a lot of the time what happens, because things become so urgent, they need to happen right now. The things that are so important to building um, to, to building our, our, our life or building our family or building our, our, our career or building our business, those things that are important get lost because the urgent things come up, the things that we can't control, the outcomes of. And, and, and I want to encourage you, just because something is, is urgent does not mean it's important. And that's a, that's a weird thing. It might be urgent, but it might not actually be that important, right? 
It's it needs to happen now or never, right? It's going to happen now or never. And sometimes we need to let go of some of the urgent things for the things that are actually important, the things that need to get done, that that that, that are a priority. We need to learn to schedule, you know. And I want to encourage you, you know, as as a thing, just like write down. Okay, these are my tasks that I have to do in my life. You know, at work, with my family, the activities I need to do with my with my kids, with my wife, with my spouse, with my church. Like write it all down and say, okay, is this important and urgent? Does it need to happen now? Is it important but not urgent? But that's really key. You know, what's important but it's not that urgent? So you kind of push those things aside because it's like, I don't need to do it now. So just because it's important, it doesn't matter. I have urgent things I got to do. The important things that aren't urgent are really, really key for us. And then number three, not important but urgent, right? They need to happen now. They're not that important. Like it's not going to really make or break anything, but it's going to have to happen right now. And then lastly, again, not important and not urgent. You know, and, and, and figure this out, lay out your tasks, lay out your activities, lay them all out and put these things. Okay. What is the priority for today? What is the priority for tomorrow? What is the priority for this week? Schedule it. That'll help you track your progress. Cause you know, okay, I accomplished these things. I focused in on these things. I focused in on the things that were so important, but I've been neglecting because they don't seem urgent but they're so important to your growth. They're so important to your business. They're so important to your church. You know, what is important is really, really key. Focus in on what's important and what's urgent. There's some things that we do that are not important and not urgent that we're just wasting our time. You know, figure out the things, okay? And not that we don't need to do them, but those should be at the bottom of the list of the things that you need to accomplish, you know, this week. You know, schedule is important because, again, it allows us to know what's coming up it allows us to know what's right here in front of us. It allows us to know what's happening, you know, a year or two down the road, scheduling, knowing what's happening. And it helps us not procrastinate, right? It helps us not become procrastinators and realize that the, the things that need to be done now and the things that can wait, what needs to happen now? What needs to happen right now? What are the things that can wait? Figure that out in your life. It'll help us become more focused because we know the things that we need to focus on. We need to know the things that we need to focus on. You might look at your business. You might look at your life. You might look at your family. And you might see some tasks that are not important and not urgent. These might be some of the things that you can delegate, you know, give to your kids to do, you know, give, give to, you know, your, your coworkers to do, you know, give to whoever. You know, you can maybe delegate some of those tasks so that you can focus on the things that are most important and most urgent in your life. That'll, that's the power of a schedule to help us bring things from out of focus to bring it back in to focus. It's like when you're on your camera and you know, you're trying to take a photo and it's way out of focus. And you're like, I gotta fix this. You, you, know, you figure it out. You know, that's the same thing. We have to tweak things in our life to bring things back into focus, to bring things back into a place where we know our priorities, we know what's important, we know what's urgent, we know what we can delegate, and this will help us become more Uh, focused in our lives, in our workplaces, in our churches, in our families. It'll allow us to become more focused. And when we become more focused, we become more productive. You know, focus directly correlates to productivity. And so if we can learn to become more focused, and I want to give you just a quick recap of what what we talked about, is that we have first diagnose where you are. Figure out the problem. Don't just see the symptom. The symptom should guide you to the problem. What's the symptom? Lead you to the problem. And the problem you should find a solution for. Number two is make a plan. Okay, I know the problem. I I know the solution. Now what am I going to do about it? You know, do something about it. You know, make a plan and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then number three is track the progress. You know, actually track where you are. You know, whatever that looks like for you, track it. It might be screen time, whatever. Track it. However you can, through accountability, right? We track things through through accountability. We do it by diagnosing again, and then we do it by creating a schedule, right? What's important and what's urgent in your life, and what are the things that you can delegate? And I hope and pray that we can learn together to be more present and engaged in all assets of life. Of life. Let us remember to diagnose where we are, make a plan to move forward, and to track the progress of where we are going. You can do it. We can do it together. And I know that even by God's grace, he can help us become more focused as spouses, as leaders, as fathers, as mothers, as children, as workers, as owners. It will allow us to move forward with the more that we can do when we become more focused. We stop procrastinating and we step into the new and the beautiful things that God has for us. You can do it. 
and we can do it together. Thank you for joining us today for the Known Podcast. We have new content coming out every Wednesday, so make sure to come back next week for a new episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Known Podcast and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. See you next week.